Welcome to WebPixel Live. My name's Adam Hanlon. I'm the of WebPixel, and we'd like to thank Exit 404 for sponsoring this episode. I think I finally got their name right. My apologies. Exit 404 produce a range of accessories for um, vid di digital, uh, sorry, for video and still cameras. Um, and please head on over to exitxit404.com to check out what they're up to. Um, I'm joined by my friend and fellow photographer, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Good to see you. Yes, good morning. Nice to see you too. Um, and at the end of 2021, so the end of last year, um, Adobe launched a, or released a series of updates to Lightroom um, and also to, to Camera Raw um, and Photoshop. Um, and some of those have got some great new features for underwater photography. So, so we thought we'd have a chat today about those, Alex. So, so which of the new features have you found really useful, Alex? Well, I think the area I wanted to talk about most was the, the changes in, in masking. And you know, I, I don't want to do a sort of tutorial on how to use them. And um, as I know you could fully agree with me, the place to go for that is to go and see our friends at Go Ask Erin and get Erin Quigley's you know, input on that, who's running a lot of tutorials about these new features because there's, there's yep. a lot of capability in them. They really, yep. you know, and, and that's why I think it's important for us to do a video to highlight it is I think this yep. is, you know, as big a change to raw file processing um, and processing in general that we've had in underwater photography for quite a few years. And because yep. most of us underwater photographers, we often do lots of Lightroom processing when we're on a trip and then we come back and we don't turn it on for three months. Um, <laughs> many people may not have even tried these updates yet um, because they haven't had a trip to do. And what I would yep. recommend doing is give yourself some time before a trip to maybe you know, read that material rather than get on a liverboard, find you haven't got any internet access and you've suddenly got all these new controls and you're trying to learn them. Because I would say that they're, they're very, you know, like all of Lightroom, they're very intuitive, but yeah. there's, they're quite intimidating to begin with because suddenly you have a lot more options. And until you've yeah. played with them a few times, they can be just, just a little bit intimidating. So, you know, yeah. and, and you won't be able to access your Go Ask Arian video when you're on the liverboard necessarily because you're, you won't, have the internet access to do it. Um, so that's the main area I wanted to talk about. I'd also sort of wanted to remind people that these controls also exist in Photoshop. So remind me to talk about Photoshop before the end. So yep. um, typically the way we've done selective work in Lightroom in the past was to use um, the brush tool and the, 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 the gradient filters um, and, and sometimes the, the, the radial filter as well. Um, mm. for, for the radial mask, for, for that sort of thing. But it was mainly lots of brushwork, lots of, of graduated filters, and then refining those sometimes with luminosity um, tuning or with color tuning or doing selective work within each of them. But that allowed mm. us to, to control the image. And those tools still exist in, um, in, in, in Lightroom and are very easy to use. But there's a lot more um, added functionality within the masking area of Lightroom, which is basically the shortcut for how to do selective work on your pictures. Um, yeah. it, it's a little bit slower to introduce because you need to sort of generally go in and say, create new mask and then choose the mask type to do. But two yeah. shortcuts I would recommend you learn very quickly are letters K and M. Um, K yeah. is how to quickly get the brush tool to work and M yeah. is how to quickly to get the gradient um, filter to work. And yep. that way you can get them up straight away without clicking through the create new mask, create a radio filter and then start using it. So that yep. I think if knowing those two shortcuts are really valuable now because they make it as quick as it used to be, because um, certainly for me, I process quick pictures very quickly and yep. I like to be able to get those controls up so very quickly. Um, I think perhaps as underwater photographers, the most valuable tool in the new system is the subject select um, mask and this is kind of a bit of, of, of Adobe magic that you know circus that focuses in on your main subject of a photo and I would say that this works particularly well in photos where your subject is very clear from the background yep. um, but it's what it's clever at doing is it will it will select subjects even if the whole subject isn't in focus you know so you might have a macro shot where you've got a a goby and the face of it's in focus but the tail goes out of focus the subject selection is very good at at finding that face and yep. then finding the rest of the body and it, it does work very well but it particularly likes simple scenes like pelagic animals in the blue and i would say that 
if you are someone who shoots big animal photography, this is a tool that you're going to be using all the time because it allows you in one click to instantly select that subject and therefore begin to selectively process that subject without having to globally process the whole image. And for, you know, for big animals in the blue, that is, is obviously very, very powerful. Um, subject selection is also very good if you want to work on that background because you can use that subject selection to instantly select your subject and then you can invert that selection if as long as you do it straight away mm. and then it will select the rest of the picture mm. so for example if you want to you know make the rest of the picture bluer or you want to make the rest of the picture darker you know that inverted subject selection just you know select the subject and then invert the the mask you automatically have a very nice control of the background and this um, allows you to get a great deal of contrast in your subject, doesn't it? Because you, you yeah. can lighten the, lighten the subject, for example, and darken the background. So it helps yeah. with, the, with separating the, the subject from the background and, and all sorts of other things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you want to do like a quick and dirty get rid of backscatter, you can subject select, invert it, and then just drop the texture right down and the backscatter will kind of be hidden. And then you can quickly put it on social media and everyone's like, <laughs> well, that's great. You know, it's, 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 you know, just in like three seconds, you can kind of hide all your backscatter at yeah. low resolution anyway i wouldn't do that as a solution at full res but yeah. as, i mean just fun but um so i think that those are, are really powerful tools there's also a sky select tool which is less useful underwater yeah. um, although sometimes it will do quite well on backgrounds it usually doesn't do that well i prefer to use to select a background i don't find the sky select works as well as using inverted subject selection and then as as erin's tutorials i'm sure will explain you can then refine all these selections further, hmm. but they're very quick and very powerful. And obviously, once you've got anything selected in Lightroom or Photoshop, you then have the ability to differentially process your pictures. Now, um, go, that's go. kind of, you know, it's, I don't really want to dive in too much into the processing of them, but you've obviously, anyone who uses these tools will immediately know having that ability to select. What's great about the selections is it does seem to give very good edges, very mm. realistic edges, mm. um, which it actually, if you just use brushes and things like that to select a subject, it can be quite hard to get a, a nice natural looking edge to those selections. And what's nice about the Lightroom system, it seems to be well tuned to just giving you a nice, there's obviously just a, a few pixel feather or something like that at the edge of these selections so that when you make these changes, you don't end up with, with big obvious changes. Yeah. Um, the point I wanted to make, though, as well, is rather than dive into how to process them here, was to talk about the fact that Photoshop also has this, this capability built into it. And I know that masking in Photoshop is very powerful, but people find the idea of masking really difficult. Oh. Um, and I think that these tools give a really great way into, into pro to, to selecting subjects within Photoshop and therefore giving you your first step to be able to mask much more effectively in Photoshop. So, you know, Photoshop has um, subject selection masks. Um, the one that I like to use is a, um, a filter which is called the object selection tool. Mm. And you can, it, the standard mode for that is a rectangle, which is fine, it's very quick to use. I actually prefer it in the lasso mo mo um, one because I find it's quicker to go around something with a lasso and it really helps the filter if you've done a, a reasonable rough job of going around something. So I like using that in the lasso mode. But there is also just an automatic subject selection, an automatic sky selection mm -hmm. within those tools um, to allow you to do it. But I, I like using the object selection tool because, say, you've got lots of fish in a picture. You can just do your, your lasso around one of them and it will pick it out just like subject selection in Lightroom. And again, the ability to do that in Photoshop you just have more control and obviously you can then refine that selection even further in, in Photoshop and create a really nice effect. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I think it's, you know, once you've, I think people find masking in Photoshop quite challenging mm. uh, and quite intimidating to use. And what's great is if you get on top of these controls in Lightroom, you'll find that actually there are analogous controls in Photoshop. And suddenly one of the things that's been holding you back, to using Photoshop is actually now much more user friendly. Yeah. And I think you'll find that a, a really valuable tool for processing. And that's why I feel it's, it's such a big change in processing um, because it really allows us to, you know, we all shoot pictures of pelagic animals, for example, where you don't get quite enough strobe on them and it's kind of 
blue water and a kind of a, a bluey dolphin or a bluey shark in front of it. Yeah. You can now subject select so quickly in Lightroom and Photoshop that you know you don't have those problems. I think I think most people imagine that, that subject selection is going to involve trying to draw a a mask or draw a shape around the subject and that well, it, it used to be exactly that and, and, and it, it's i mean if you had a complex shaped subject that could take hours um, and yeah. and you went wrong and it was you know it was really hard work and these tools really automate that process and make that literally click of a button stuff rather than being mm -hmm. something that you needed to get a pen out and draw on the you know it was it, it was really hard work it was really hard work yeah. um, and, and if it gets it slightly wrong there are really quick tools for refining it Yep. And you, but you can still go back and have that very precise control as well if you really want to do it on a, you know, on a very manual level as well. So yeah, it's, they're really, really valuable tools, and I think particularly suited to underwater photography because of that, particularly for that wide-angle example and also a macro example where we're dealing with subject and background, yep. and the ability to process both separately is very powerful. Yep. Yep. I think I should finish by saying the downside of giving photographers very powerful tools oh, yeah. is is not all people have got the um the discipline to 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 use them um correctly and, and certainly having come from judging some underwater photography competitions in in recent weeks and months um subject selection is definitely leading to people overdoing things and and one of the problems is is that in a photo if you select a subject perfectly which you can now do in the click of a button and then you process it unsubtly yeah it ends up looking stuck onto the picture yeah you know so you know if you completely you know white balance that subject and drain all the blue out of say a, a shark in front of the blue water um yes your shark will stand out more but it would also then look stuck on yeah, not, not like it was never there in the first place not so, necessarily for a good reason uh, you know people need to, to learn a little bit of restraint and to use those tools to their advantage and just because you can doesn't mean you should so, so um, obi obi one like, alex says with great power comes great responsibility just for the sake of yeah, the, the balance of the force in in my competition judging yeah, i think it's a, yeah. it's an important so, one so, so yeah seems reasonable mm. um, fantastic alex wise words um yeah um, no but i I'd really encourage people to get into them i, I know um a few people in the early days, you know, were, oh, I don't like all these changes. I was happy with where it was. Um, I don't think we're going to be going back from this. So no. it's, you know, it's, it's get on board. Um, and I think also it is very powerful and it's, it's there. They're tools that are really well suited to us yep. because we often have to, you know, we have that situation of, um, I think they're probably more suited to us almost than land photographers. Yep. So they're very valuable tools for the underwater photographer. And I'd encourage you to get good at using them. Um, just for the sake of my competition judging, if anything else. And, and, and practical terms, um, the the place to 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 dive into the tutorials on how to do it is 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 Erin's go ask Erin dot com. Um, um, Erin Quigley is 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 very good at, at setting out how these tools work. Um, and you know, I think I think in fact, I think she has a um, a session coming up um, next Friday. So so Friday the twenty. I, I can put a link, I'll put a link in the in the show notes because I can't remember the date. Um, yeah. But 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 certainly certainly you know I think this is a good place to go get get some background information, figure out how to do it, and then practice it because yeah it's as you say it's it's going to become part of our our processing pipeline. So yeah. yeah and yeah and and lots of people because it's only you know it's come out in the last sort of you know three or four months. A lot of people maybe haven't opened up their Lightroom very much in that time. That's so right. it's worth yeah. and and you know it's been you know been updated and things yeah. Yep. So just learn your K&M if you'd like processing fast. A&M. Thank you, Alex. &M. They're, on, Thank they're together, their right hand on the keyboard, tick, tick, you know. Uh. <laughs> there you go. There you have it. Um, thank you very much, Alex. Um, and thanks again to Exit 404 for sponsoring this episode. We really appreciate our sponsor support. Um, please feel free to add any comments. Um, as I say, I will make, put a link in to, to go ask Erin's um, site um, in the show notes as well. Um, I would love a like if you enjoyed this and please feel free to add comments, suggestions in the suggestion box. Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.